Hey guys, I really <laughs> gotta be better about this. Anyway, I am changing my camber adjustment arm. That's what it looks like. Normally it is right there. So you'll see there's the air suspension sensor arm that goes on that hole. And then the top of the arm sits back in there. And then the other end sits right there. Um, so pulled it out. Here are the, the arms I got. I ended up, I wanted to buy a set from a friend I've made in the group. But what I ended up doing, because this came with the, the toe arm adjustments, and this is the toe. Toe meaning how it's facing in and out, and then camber is how it's up and down, I guess. So camber is how it sits, and then toe is where it faces, right? Where your nose is looking versus where if, if your head's level or your ears are up or down. So this one came with the toe arm adjustment, and so my toe is okay at this point, but I don't know once, once I swap the camber arms, if my toe's gonna be out. So anyway, um, so what I did, so I've gotten the camber adjustment arm out, and here's the replacement one. And then what I did is I just put, you know, the nut through both of them, so I know where they're starting. And then I know that my camber is off, right? It's held like if the tire's this way, it's held too far this way, so it's eating the inside of the tire. So I want the arm to be out, or the camber to be out. So I need this to be out further. And so I, having the same starting point, you know, I've adjusted that arm out. And what I'm going to do is I need to adjust this arm out, because that's, you only have that much that you can unscrew, right? And I'm pretty close to unscrewing all of it. So there aren't very many threads holding it right here. So what I need to do is back, you know, put that in further and then bring this one out and then tighten it with this nut against that, right? So it, when you're adjusting it, you're, you know, unscrewing this screw and then you use that nut to push against that body to hold that in place, right? It's putting pressure against those threads. Same thing here is this screw will come out and then that nut is going to push against this part of the body, which will hold this in place right from back screwing. Um, so anyway, so that's what I'm working on now. So I need to screw this back in and, you know, make sure you always have two wrenches so I can put one wrench here, one wrench there, right? And then back it out and then unscrew this, screw that back in and then tighten it up and then install it. Um, as far as uninstalling it the the air shock sensor is a 10 millimeter the back bolt that's up against the body of the car that is an 18 millimeter and then the one that's in the front is a 15 millimeter so 15 18 10 and then with the 18, there's a, it's right here. So, right, you've got a nut and a bolt. So you have to hold on to the nut as you're undoing the bolt. And that's exactly how it goes in on the car's body is this way and the nuts on that side. Once I loosened this, I actually could just hold on to it with my finger and I was able to take the nut out just fine. But if you're not, you know, just get, I assume it's the same size, right? Yeah, it's the same size. It's the same 18. So you can just get a, you know, whatever wrench you have, put it on that side and then just hold it in place as you're backing this one off. Uh, so yeah, the, to install it, it's the exact reverse, right? I'm going to put this in first, this side. i um, going to probably screw it in most of the way. I'm not going to tighten it, right? But I'll screw it in, put the nut on so it's being held in place. And then I'll pull this back so I can slide that arm in. I'll put this bolt in and the bolt goes in and it's actually like right here. If you see right there, it's threaded in the knuckle. So it will go in, it will thread into the knuckle. I'll get that most of the way, won't tighten it all the way right. And then I'll put in the air suspension adjustment arm or sensor, right? I'll put that in, tighten that up, and you'll notice on the side of it, right, there's, 
it's got a flat piece right here, so you just hold it on both sides as you're tightening it. Right. So if anybody ever finds this little plastic piece, I saw somebody asking one of the threads about it. That's what it is, is, you know, your air shock sensor, right? It's falling off. Anyway, um, so I'll put that on, and then once that's on, then I'll tighten everything up. You know, some good ugga uggas. I'll actually go and look at the manual and see what the manual calls out as far as the torque specs because you really don't want this coming off as you're driving down the road that would be less than ideal um also another janky thing i do totally up to you guys right but our rotors they don't really ever get up to temperature and so because of that they have a lot of rust so i'll spray it with just this portion right with some um, lithium grease and then I'll spray the inside where it mounts against this with lithium grease. And that grease, you can see before I did it from the previous owner, right, there's some, some rust on there. But if you hit it with that lithium grease, it keeps it from rusting. And I haven't ever had a problem with this not backing out because there's a, a washer that has kind of offset, offset grooves. And there's two of them, so they kind of fit into each other then they create enough pressure on that nut that at least I haven't had any problem. Um, and I know that's what somebody's going to say is if you put grease on there, it's going to back the nut off. But the nut, I think that's torqued in at like 250 pounds. A little bit of grease, if that causes it to come off, we got bigger problems. And I'm not using penetrating oil or anything designed to enable that. I'm just using some lithium grease just to cover it to keep it from rusting more. It's just a waterproofing. Um, so anyway, so that's what I've done. And if you're ever removing them, get rid of that, that stupid screw in the rotor and never put it in again. Throw that thing away. Um, but yeah, so while you're in here, also check your, you know, your brake pads. See how much pad you have. My pads are looking really good. Make sure you check the other side because on these non-performance models, there's just, right, you can see my fingers in there. There's only one piston. So what it does is that piston squeezes from the one side and then... Um, this side of it, there's just a pin that it slides back and forth in. And so if that ends up running out of lube or gets rusty, it will kind of freeze in place. And then your piston will only use the one pad to stop your braking. Um, so yeah, check both sides just to make sure that that, that pin hasn't gotten rusty and you're burning up one, one side of your brakes and not the other. Anyway, so that's... Uh, that's changing out your camber arms and I'll I'll change out the toe you know I'll try to take a video of that too but the toe you can see same thing right there's a bolt back here bolt and a nut back there is a bolt and a nut this bolt I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it it's gonna be tight right because I'm gonna have to shove the nut this way have it almost touching there I don't think there's any way I can get it out, but if I can get it far enough over that I can get the toe arm out, put the new one in and then shove the bolt back in and tighten it up is what I'm hoping to do. Um, anyway, so that's my, that's my goal. And then I'll take it back to the alignment shop to have them do the alignment. You'll see I've got a, you know, a camber. It'd be better if that was on a straight, right? But you know, there's, that's how you can kind of dial your camber in a little bit is using one of these bubble camber um, adjustment tools and there's plenty of videos on how to use that so look up one of those but once I get it in I'll kind of dial it fairly close with this and then I'll take it back to the alignment shop and have them finish it up all right well let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching